Hello listeners and welcome to episode 2 of DNA Film Wars. Today, in anticipation of the Halloween film coming out this weekend, we'll be covering topics related to the Halloween franchise, uh, such as our opinion of the overall franchise, uh, we'll discuss our opinions of the upcoming movie, uh, then we will rank all 10 of the Halloween films. That's going to be a task. It is. Uh, we will... Uh, give our top five slasher films, and we will discuss recent movie news. So um, I hope that you've stuck with us this far. Uh, mm -hmm. Episode two. This is our first discussion episode, and I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to my co-host Dylan for his opinion of the overall Halloween franchise. Um, the overall opinion of the Halloween franchise. Um, well, I can tell you for for one thing, it starts off real strong. John Carpenter's first film in 1978 is an absolute horror classic. Um, I'd say it really helped kickstart the modern slasher genre film. Um, such a great film overall. Um, really, really thankful for uh, what John Carpenter was able to accomplish with that first film that led to the creation of ten other films. Um, the first two are, are some of the better ones. After that, some of them kind of drop off there for a little bit, but they're all still a they're all still a pretty fun time all the way all the way through the end. So I, I'd say my overall opinion is. It's pretty good for for the films, and I really I really enjoy them a lot. So uh, I'll let Aaron give his opinion on them. Oh yeah, you know it, it's remarkable that I am a fan of the Halloween franchise because the first Halloween film I saw, first quote unquote horror movie I, I think I ever watched was Halloween Three. I'm so sorry. Which is a terrible terrible movie, and I I did not realize the first time I was watching it that it didn't have Michael Myers. So I'm sitting here the whole time thinking, where's Michael? <laughs> So, but, you know, after I, I watched the other films, I really fell in love with Michael Myers. That kind of sounds weird since he's a serial killer. But uh, I'm a huge fan. You know, like, like Dylan said, John Carpenter's original is a classic. The second film's pretty good. Uh, you know, the rest of them are, you know, they're up and down. But um, some of them I really like, some of them I don't. Uh, and, you know, then Rob Zombie's remakes, first one's. First one's all right. It's pretty solid. Second one's not, um, but I'm I'm really excited for this new film. It looks it looks really it looks really good. So uh, so with that being said, what what was your first reaction to learning that they were going to make a new one? So when I first heard about about them making a new Halloween film, um, I didn't know that John Carpenter was attached to it at all. All I heard was that uh, was that a new film was being made and that Danny McBride was in talks to help write write the film and I was like, well, not seeing a whole lot of great <laughs> things with Danny McBride, but apparently he's got a really good show called Eastbound and Down that's supposed to be really amazing and uh, he does a great job with it. And um, after learning that he had approached John Carpenter with the script for the film and John Carpenter said that he loved it and uh, wanted to wanted to hop on board, um, I started to to get a little bit more hopeful for the movie. So we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, uh, I mean, when I, I first heard about it, I knew that John Carpenter was attached. I knew that Jamie Lee Curtis was returning. I actually did not know that Danny McBride was one of the writers on it until much more recently. I am not a huge Danny McBride fan, but we'll see. Uh, but I was really excited. I, I really like the fact that they're bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis. That's that's always that's a plus. Yeah. I know John Carpenter's not technically the director. He's an executive producer. I'm, I'm sure his influence... He is doing the score. Yeah, he is coming back to do the score with his classic Halloween yeah. thing with a modern take, so... And uh, I'm sure he had a heavy hand in the production, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, I was really excited for it. Uh, what did you think when you saw the first trailer for it? Um, that first trailer when it came out, um, it was taking it back to that first time we watched that first film, which was actually here pretty recently for me. I'd never seen any of the Halloween films until about... About five or six months ago, and I watched the first one here with here with Aaron, and fell in love with with the with the franchise. And when I when I first saw that trailer, it was like taking it back to that first film for me. And it just really made me made me really excited to see the new film. And when and, and the shot of uh, of Michael putting the mask on toward the end of the trailer just really really gets me excited. And I'm really excited to see Jamie Lee Curtis come back and uh, and reprise her role as as Laurie Strode and see what she's got to offer for us. So, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. Like, all the callbacks they have in the first trailer. I mean, that first trailer really washed away all doubts or that I had. Um, oh, I'm, now I'm super excited. I uh, I think it looks really good. I'm, I'm glad that they're going to, I think, from the trailer, it looks like they're going to try to keep it in tone with more of the original film. 
you know, when Rob Zombie took over the franchise, he made it a lot more brutal, a lot more violent. It's a lot more violent, yeah. A lot more sexualized. <laughs> but um, I, I'm really excited, and I, I hope they do a good job with it. So, um, with that being said, are you still you're still enthusiastic about it? You're... I'm 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 really looking forward to this film. I mean, I've heard a couple reviews for it so far, and I've heard I've heard good things overall so far from 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 people that I've that I've read and listened to reviews on. Um, they're they're calling it really good, and I'm really glad that they're um, gonna completely retcon two through two through eight. Um, Rob Zombie's films don't really count in this yeah. in this. <laughs> Uh, film, but we're gonna we're gonna completely get rid of Halloween two through Halloween Resurrection, and I think that's really gonna help the story, and um, it's gonna it's gonna make for a great movie, and I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So you got any doubts or concerns? Um, not really. I'm 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 hoping that it's just got a good story, and that we get some we get some good scenes with with Michael and uh, and Jamie Lee as Laurie going going after him. So I hope I hope it's a good movie, and I'm I'm thinking it's gonna be. So what are you thinking so far? Yeah, I'm. I'm really excited. I. I am a little. I guess I'll say interested, not concerned. With Danny McBride being a writer, how hard are they going to push that comedic part of it? Which I mean, a little comedy is good for every film. I just don't want them to like to be in every every scene and just throwing it in your face. But uh, you know, I'm not too worried about that. I think I think they'll do a good job with that. And overall, I just think I think it's gonna be a, a really fine movie. So yeah, I think it'll I think it'll be a real good time. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, want to get into our top ten or well top ten uh, ranking the Halloween films. Let's let's do it. You want to start it off at number ten? Yeah, I'm gonna start off at number ten. I'm gonna go with uh, the obvious choice, Halloween three, the season <laughs> of the witch. It's a uh, it's a bad movie, and it is uh, made much worse by uh, because of the fact that they do not it does not have Michael Myers. Which even in the worst Halloween films, when Michael Myers when Michael Myers shows up, it automatically makes me happy. So, but that that movie's just awful from beginning to end. It's it's just I just don't even have words for it. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you at, at number ten. I'm gonna go ahead and say Halloween three season. I will 100% agree with you on that. That that movie is is real bad from beginning to end. Um, just everything about it. The fact that. That Michael Myers, the the titular character of the entire franchise, is not in a Halloween movie, completely baffles me. I don't know what they were thinking when they were making this movie, or I guess I do. They were wanting to make a uh, an anthology style style film, right? Is what they were yeah. going for, um, and it just did not work out. And and the stupid jingle in that movie happy, will happy be Halloween. will be stuck in your head <laughs> till the end of time. So. Um, that's gotta be my number 10 is Halloween 3, so. Alright, yeah, at, at number 9 I'm gonna go with Halloween Resurrection. Uh, you know, it, it proves a theory that just because you put Buster Rhymes and Tyra Banks in the same movie does not make it good. Um, <laughs> uh, and the, the movie's awful, it's, it's the whole haunted house, uh, viral video thing they were going for just doesn't work. The acting in it is terrible. I will say that Buster Rhymes is the best is the best character in that movie. So I mean you, you got that going for him. You know, I didn't get to see Michael kill Tyra Banks. That was off screen. It was kind of disappointing. <laughs> uh but yeah, that movie that movie's just bad too. Oh yeah, and I also have to mention they killed Jamie Lee in the first ten minutes. Uh I guess they could probably only afford her for the first ten minutes. <laughs> uh that and I, just the way that you know, we spent this entire franchise him trying to kill Damian Lee and just the way they did it. All right, so coming in at number nine on my list, I'm going to go ahead and go with Rob Zombie's H2. It is not the greatest by any means, that is for sure. And it definitely has no comparison to his first movie, which was actually surprisingly surprisingly pretty good. Um, overall, the, uh, the story of it just completely goes off the wall. Uh, Lori becomes like a psychopath emo rocker chick and it just does not work and just everything about that movie is is not good to me um it gets even more violent and brutal than the first one and more overly sexualized than the first one and it's just not something that that really um speaks halloween film to me and other than that i mean um the very end of the film where michael b breaks his classic character moments and uh speaks is really odd to me 
Um, when he just shouts, die to a cop. Actually, I, I think that was only in the unrated director's cut. Is that cut. only in the unrated cut? I have not watched the theatrical cut, but I have read something where it ended different. Well, in the unrated <laughs> cut, it just bothers me that he speaks, because that's not something Michael does. Did you, uh, did you appreciate the out-of-place Blade Runner esque references of the white horse. <laughs> uh it was it was okay. I mean <laughs> Rob Zombie's no Ridley Scott, so Yeah, oh uh, yeah, then definitely definitely different passages. So, uh, that's different. that's my number nine is Rob Zombie's Halloween too, so Yeah, coming in at number eight for me, I'm gonna go with Halloween six, The Curse of Malcolm Myers. Uh you know, it's got Paul Rudd and his I believe his first starring role. I I'm sure I know it's his first starring role ever. Uh, but he's not getting it. And, uh, the lore that they try to add to Michael Myers with this whole curse <clears throat> of he has to kill his family because it's some ancient curse, and then he's got this cult following, and it, it, it's just, it's just off the wall crazy, and it's not well made. It's really disappointing. I, I'm, su I'm shocked that Paul Rudd had a movie career after that, just being <laughs> honest. So, uh, what about you? Alright, so for my number eight, I'm gonna take your number... You're number nine, and I'm going to say Halloween Resurrection. Um, pretty much everything you said about it is 100% true. It's just, it's not a good, it's not a good film overall. Tyra Banks and Busta Rhymes definitely don't help much. I mean, even though, even though Busta is probably the, the, the best part about that movie, just that whole, uh, that whole, whole movie was not good. Um, they tried to kind of copy, you know, that, that 90s vibe of the, Semi found footage style because they were like in reality style thing that was starting to become big, big around that time and and set it in the in the Myers house and and just try to try to play it up and it was just super campy and it wasn't good and uh, I just I just don't care for it a whole lot so yeah and one of the biggest continuity errors in the Halloween franchise Michael Myers house is different every movie almost. In every movie <laughs> so. it's it's wild. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my number seven. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween two. Yeah, like like you said, it's it's not good. It's <clears throat> Rob Zombie. My biggest problem with his films is that he he doesn't know when to cut away from the violence. He has to show you every little disgusting detail, and it's just self indulgent and it's it's over the top. And yeah, the story for that one's not good. Uh, you know, I've read where I think it was. I think some of the problem was studio interference. Yeah, that movie was originally not supposed to be made, and that's why they made the first one the way they did. Yeah. And um, they that movie made a decent amount of money. And what happened was they wanted to make a second one. They were going to hire someone else, but Rob Zombie was upset that they were talking about hiring someone else and decided to come back and make this film. And yeah, I didn't really feel that he was that passionate about it, watching it. And honestly. If you take Michael out of that movie, what is it? What I mean, do you really? I mean, is it? Do you really lose much except for the, the whole end, sequence? Because most of the movie, Michael's just walking through fields and woods and stuff, fields and so. woods and stuff with a couple of random, totally unnecessary kills. Of him. Yeah, uh, and you, you know, probably the most exciting, the, the best scene in the whole movie is this long dream sequence by Lori at the beginning where she's being. Chase through the hospital and an homage to Halloween 2, the original Halloween 2. Yeah. But yeah, overall, it's, and, and then Michael seeing his dead mother, that's just... That's just, just adds to the... That's just like a what? <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just not good, so... So uh, coming in at my number 7, I'm going to go with uh, Halloween 6. Um, like Aaron said, uh, overall, again, that movie is pretty bad. It just... Some, sometimes it doesn't make sense. The entire thing about them saying that Michael has to has to kill his family members because of this this curse from this satanic cult that supposedly he might have been a part of was was wild. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I, you're absolutely right. I, that Paul Rudd was not good in that movie, and I don't know how he had a, had as as good a film career as he's had after that movie. It was it was a bad movie. So yeah, coming in at number six for me, I got Halloween Five: The Revenge of Michael Myers. So, uh, you know, it stars Daniel Harris as Jamie. I forget what they say her last name. It Jamie Strode, I guess, is her, last, is her name. She's the daughter of uh, Lori Strode, uh, which she was in the previous film, too, which I'll get to later. But 
Um, you know, I think she's a decent actress for how young she was, but the whole I can't talk for the first half of the movie... It really gets me, too. Yeah, know? it wouldn't be so bad if she wasn't making all these annoying choking can't breathe sounds. I don't know, but... It, and, uh, you know, the story's not good. Uh, they had this guy following around Michael setting up Halloween 6 the whole movie and it's just kind of out of place and like why why is this here until the end when he breaks Michael out of jail but you still don't know what's going on and you know uh it's just it's all right I still enjoy parts of it I think that uh some of the stuff that some of the interaction between Michael and Jamie is it's kind of kind of good I can see the potential there but uh most of it is poorly executed, but yeah, so I'm going to go with that. Right in the middle of the pack at number six. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna follow your lead right there and go at number six, uh, Halloween 5. Like like you said, overall, it's it's a it's a bad movie as well. Um, like a good solid majority of the Halloween films, honestly. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, it's it's not great. Daniel Harris's performance, like you said, can get a, a, bit, uh, a bit annoying, I guess, for lack of better words, at times with her whole not speaking, and it just makes you kind of like, toward, toward certain parts of the movie, you, you get into it, and you just really, all, all, you're, you, all you're doing is yelling at the screen like, oh my gosh, I wish she would just spit it out already, <laughs> but um, she never does, so, <laughs> but overall, just that entire, that entire movie is also just not a good one, so. Yeah, and then at number five, I'm going to go with it's its predecessor with Halloween 4 Return of Michael Myers. Uh, I actually I actually really like Daniel Harris in this movie as Jamie. I think she is the best actress in this entire film. By far. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, it's continuity wise, you know, I, I'm always for, you know, continuity trying to make films flow together. It's not good because we obviously saw Donald Pleasance's character, Dr. Loomis, Blow himself up in Halloween 2. He shows up in this film with a slight burn on, I think, the right <laughs> side of his face. But, uh, you know, other than that, but I like Donald Pleasance. I think he can get a little over the top, but uh, I think, uh, I, you know, I think he's a, still acting a decent job in this movie. Uh, the mask in this movie is terrible. It's bad. But, I don't know, just personally, just the cheap quality of it almost makes it scarier. For me, some for some reason, I don't know. Like when I was younger watching these movies, Michael's mask in this movie just creeped me out. But uh you know, I, I enjoy this movie, I'm not gonna lie. I think I think it's got some some fun moments, I think, at the end where they're <clears> chasing <throat> each other around on rooftops. Although it's it's pretty obvious they're not really on real rooftops as a set. But uh it's it, I think it's kind of exciting and I, I, I really I really enjoy this one. Um, I'm going to follow in your footsteps again um, on number five and go Halloween 4. Um, this movie, like you said, is is pretty enjoyable for the most part. There are some definitely some, some bad parts to it. Um, it's definitely great to see to see Michael Myers come back in that, in that fourth film um, after coming off the, the heels of Halloween 3, which was just so awful um, and didn't do well. I definitely 100% understand why they brought Michael back because that's the character that helps that franchise go where it's supposed to go. Um, uh, Jamie's character in the movie is 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 a is pretty good. I really enjoy her in in the movie and she actually does a lot better job than in Halloween 5, I think. Um, and in the end where she uh, kind of follows in Michael's footsteps and and has the uh, the clown costume and stabs her mother, her stepmother. Her stepmother, yeah, yes. stabs her and uh, tries to kill her is is pretty interesting cuz I guess she's supposed to be in the same mindset as Michael. They're kind of connected. Yeah, I'll say that's. I think that's the best ending of any of the Halloween films. I like even, it a lot. Even the first one, I would say. But uh, yeah, uh, coming in at number four, I'll go with Rob Zombie's first remake. I really like the first half hour or so of the movie where we're going in and we're we're trying to. He's trying to humanize Michael. I know you know some fans would probably be like, oh, I don't know about that, but showing his childhood and how it was you know really rough and kind of why he turned into the serial killer. Um, I think the movie kind of goes off the rails a little bit when they, in the second half, when they just pretty much do a over-the-top remake of the original Halloween. But, uh, it, and even then, it's not bad. Um, I really think it's kind of cool, like, the, the, I can't, I can't tell you his name off the top of my head, but, uh, the, the guy that got playing Michael's, like, this huge seven-foot-tall pro wrestler dude. 
Uh, and he, he's he's pretty intimidating to look at. You know, I think, and I, I did I did appreciate how Rob Zombie tried to go into the psyche of Michael and why he's doing this. And, and I think that Rob Zombie originally wanted the entire, or at least most of the film, just to be uh, Michael's childhood, you know, his, his uh, home life, and then probably a little bit of him in the, the psychiatric hospital or whatever. And I think that would have been a really good direction to go. I think the COD probably stepped in and said... No, you can't do this. But, uh, you know, overall, I, I at least appreciate what Rob Zombie was trying to do. Not trying to copy your list, but I'm going to go ahead with number four, and I'm going to go ahead and say Rob Zombie's first Halloween film. Um, like you said, that first, that first good 30, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour of the movie is, is really good, and I think that's the film that they should have gone with. That's the film that Rob Zombie originally wanted to make. His, his vision when he came into to this project was he wanted to make a, a, a backstory film about, about Michael for his first film that was going to focus on him and his childhood and um, his his psyche and what what drove him to kill his family and then um, <clears throat> and then to humanize him a little bit yeah and and uh, go, explore Michael in in a deeper way um, and then his second film that he wanted to make was supposed to be a, a remake of of the original Halloween he obviously did not quite get his way I mean I guess he did get to make two films but didn't get to quite make it the way he wanted to, but that that first Halloween film with the first good hour of it's really really solid, and then it does kind of get over the top toward the end of the movie um, with the violence and and the gore, uh, but overall it's pretty good. And that actor's name that plays that plays Michael, his name's Tyler Mayne. He comes in at a whopping seven foot eight, which uh, makes Michael really stand out and makes him uh, a lot more scary at seven foot eight. So, or uh, six foot eight. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, and so coming in at my number three, I'm going to go with H2O. Uh, it's, uh, I believe, the seventh film in the franchise. It brought back Jamie Lee Curtis again as Lori Strode. Yeah, she does a really solid job in it. I think her son is played by Josh Harnett. Arnett, I'm not sure how to say his name. It's also got uh, appearances by a uh, really young Joseph Gordon-Levitt and they're like, oh, uh, Michelle Williams is also in it. I think it's a it's a pretty solid film. It's uh it's pretty exciting. It's cool to see Jamie Lee back, Michael chasing her again. It's I mean it's not a perfect movie. Uh it's it's got some it's got some issues, got some plot holes. It has LL Cool J in it. I don't I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, it's overall it's, I say it's it's a pretty solid film. Um again, following your footsteps. Really not trying to copy his list here, but I mean I think we're, right. I think we're the same. We're we're the same pretty out. much from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, number three is is H two O for me as well. Um, definitely seeing Jamie Lee Curtis back in her role as quote unquote Lori because technically she has changed her name. But uh, overall, I really enjoy the movie. It definitely has its moments that aren't aren't the best. But I mean, seven films in, what can you expect? It's overall a really fun time seeing seeing Michael chase a. Chase Jamie as Lori around um, in a private school campus slash house. Um, it's a it's 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 a good time, and I really I really enjoy that one. And then the end where she supposedly chops his head off, but then you find out she really does it in Halloween Resurrection. Yeah, they wreck on that later. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, a good time. So yeah, uh, for number two, I'm gonna go with Halloween two. I think the the, the first sequel until this weekend, I hope, is still the best sequel. The you know the whole plot of Michael chasing Jane or Lori, excuse me, around in the hospital. It it is interesting. I think it does have drawbacks. For example, I think Lori Strode spends way too much time helpless in a hospital bed. They really amped up the the gore the the gore in this film. Uh, you know, the original was really actually, if you watch it, mostly implied violence. There or at least implied gore. There wasn't a whole lot of excessive blood and guts going everywhere. They had a bigger budget this time around, so they, they uh, upped the gore factor. Also, I'm not sure how I felt about the synthesized Halloween score, but I mean, it's still pretty cool. But, you know, overall, I, I thought it was, I think it's a pretty decent sequel, you know, and, you know, they supposedly kill Michael at the end. Obviously, they retcon that later, too. <laughs> uh, I'd say the, the, the big downside of that is at, at the end when they blow Michael up, and he walks out on fire. It's obviously a man in a fire suit, but you know, what, what can you do? It's, it was nineteen eighty two or something like that. So, uh, but overall, I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's I think it's a pretty solid sequel. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Halloween two as my number two as well. Um, it is one hundred percent definitely the 
the best Halloween sequel thus far. Like you said, hopefully this new one will, will change our minds. Um, I'm, I'm really, really hoping that that one's going to be good. But um, Halloween 2 is, is, is definitely, as of right now, the best sequel. I definitely agree with you on the fact that... Uh, that Jamie Lee's Laurie spends way too much time in a hospital bed. Um, my thinking is that they probably couldn't afford her for as much, or either that or she just didn't really care for it anymore, and she just yeah. didn't want to be in the film as much, and they kind of just had her for a brief a brief period of time, and they just did a little bit as much as as much as they could with her with the time that she was given. Um, there are definitely some over the top moments in in that film as well, and uh, that that scene at the end where. Where Donald Pleasance, uh, as as Doctor Loomis blows him and Michael up, and they, one of them, one of them just walks out on fire, and and he supposedly dies, but then doesn't die because like like Aaron said, they retcon that afterwards, and uh, Doctor Loomis coming back later after blowing himself up with just a small burn mark on his face is is a little wild, but overall, it's it's a it's a pretty good movie, and uh, definitely the the best sequel and second best Halloween movie, so. Yeah, and so, obviously, for number one is the original John Carpenter's Halloween. I think I talked about it in our last podcast episode. Uh, it's, it's just a great film, from everything, the editing, the directing, the score, maybe not so much the acting, but just, John Carpenter was able to create an atmosphere for that movie, and it really works, and, you know, and the way he has Michael... Like in just kind of in the corner of the frame sometimes, or in the background, out of focus, and then how like especially the one scene that I remember above all else is the scene where she's standing in the threshold of this doorway or whatever, and it's black behind her, and you just kind of see Michael's face just kind of fade into view. It's like that that's that's some great directing right there, and I I just love pretty much everything about that movie. Donald Pleasance he puts on a Probably his best performance in the entire franchise. Shoot him six times. He actually does not say that until the sequel, but that's yes, <laughs> that's that's a good line too. Um, and then of course you know Jamie Lee, she she does a decent job acting in that movie. Her friends that get murdered are not the best actors on the planet, but you know it was 1978, so like I always say to critics of this film, three hundred thousand dollar budget. You gotta remember that he didn't have a lot of money to throw around on actors and everything. So, but I, I just love that movie. I'm gonna go with with John Carpenter's Halloween from 1978 as my number one on this list too. Everything you said is 100 percent true. John Carpenter's direction in the film is is amazing. He he really helped kickstart that modern horror genre and slasher and slasher film. It's just overall great movie. Jamie Lee's breakout performance is not always the best, but uh. It's definitely one that uh, helped kickstart her career and, and help her get to where she is now. Uh, she will always be the number one scream queen. It's always it's always a good time when I watch that movie. I've watched it I've watched it once or twice since uh, since first watching it and I, I've enjoyed it even more every time I've watched it. So all right, so that concludes our uh, ranking of the Halloween films. Uh, for our weekly top five, uh, we thought it would be fun to rank our top five slasher films. Uh, I'll go ahead and let Dylan start with his number five. All right, so at number five, I'm gonna come in with uh, with the Friday with with Friday the Thirteenth. So uh, that first Friday the Thirteenth came out in I believe 1980, coming a uh, coming a couple years off the off the coattail of uh, of John Carpenter's Halloween. It was trying to you know mimic it a little bit and and capitalize on its success. And uh, and I wouldn't say it necessarily did that, but overall, I really enjoy Friday the Thirteenth. Jason is not in that movie, but his mother is, and not many well, people know that. Correction, well, he, he is, he at, the is very at the end, end. <laughs> but that doesn't really count in my book, so I wouldn't say he's really in the film. But uh, Mrs. Voorhees as the killer in the film is is overall she's a she she gives a pretty good performance as as the mom and uh, and and as the killer in the film. And uh, Kevin Bacon's in this movie. I didn't know that until the other day when I watched it, and I happened to recognize him. I was like, oh my gosh, Kevin Bacon's in this movie. Obviously, his performance isn't the best in the movie, but he's one of the better actors in the film, surprisingly. But overall, it's a good time. So Yeah, for my number five, I'm going to go with uh, Wes Craven's Scream. You know, I, the first film uh, is, is, is pretty solid. You know, it's kind of a... I'd say like a horror comedy, maybe? Sort yeah, of. a horror comedy. Uh, it's Yeah, it's kind of like a, a spoof of the horror franchise while trying to also be a horror film on its own. Uh, I think it mostly works. You know, the first time I watched it, I, uh, because, you know, we're so used to these, you know, it really plays with horror film conventions, like, 
you thinking someone's the killer, and then of course it ends up not being them at the end. Well, it wants you to think someone's the killer, the boyfriend or whatever, and then he ends up being the killer, which the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool because that's never how it works out. Of course, there was also a second killer too, but I, I really enjoy that movie. I think, I think it works pretty well as a horror film. It's not super scary or anything. It works pretty good as a, as a, a spoof film, a spoof horror film. I think, unfortunately, the the later in the franchise, the last two films especially, kind of turn into the very thing they're mocking. But that first film, I, I really enjoyed. It. I think Wes Craven did a really good job there. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow with you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with number four as uh, as Wes Craven's first screen movie. Um, it was a really good time. I think Nev Campbell does a pretty good job in the movie. Um, really in, enjoy her as as Sydney. The overall dynamic of, of the movie with all the actors, it works well for me. Uh, Skeet Ulrich is, as Billy Loomis, is a good time. And then him turning out to be the killer when, when they try to throw you off and make you think he's not the killer at certain points in the movie is really cool. And then the overall the overall story is a fun time and I, I really enjoy I really enjoy the movie and it's a it's a pretty good it's a pretty good slasher film as well as a, as well as like a like a black comedy kind of. It's a it's a fun time. Yeah, so for my number four, I'm going to go with Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Uh, it's been a while since I've watched the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, franchise, but I put this one in at number three because I think it... Some some Nightmare on Elm Street fans will argue that it's the best Nightmare on Elm Street film, and it is really good because it, more than anything else, kind of really is Freddy at his best when, you know, his kind of jokester, you know, kind of messing with the kids before he kills them, and... She really showing off what he can do in the dreams and everything. Is it, I think it's a pretty solid for considering it's a sequel to a B movie horror franchise. Sorry to Nightmare on Elm Street fans out there. <laughs> I think I think it's pretty solid. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put that at number three and uh, number four. Excuse me. Um. So for my number three, I'm gonna come in with uh with Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho from 1960, the the one that's in black and white that some of you may not have seen. It is 100% way better than the remake with Vince Vaughn. Uh, excuse me. We won't talk about that, though. Um, overall, that movie is completely amazing. It is a horror classic and a, a masterpiece of horror. Um, what Alfred Hitchcock was able to accomplish in the 60s um, and to create that movie for what it was is truly, truly awesome. There's not a whole lot of violence or gore on screen, surprisingly, um, which is which is completely understandable for 1960. Um, there's the classic shower scene that everyone that everyone tries to mimic in in horror movies, but uh, Alfred Hitchcock did it first, and it's it's a great scene. And I will always love the very end of that movie with uh, with Norman Bates' character sitting sitting in that in that cell. Uh, and he's kind of just gone, and it's his mother completely coming out through him, and uh, it's 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 really awesome and really amazing what what he did with that movie. So that's my number three. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you this time. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Psycho as well. Uh, yeah, like you said, for 1960, that that's amazing. What what Alfred Hitchcock uh, accomplished pretty much kickstarted the the slasher the slasher genre. I I really like how he he tried to make you think that it was the mother the entire time. Turns out it was the son who had his his mother's personality in him. It's it, it's a it's it's just a great film. And even today, that shower scene is a little it's just a little tough to watch. It's uh it's pretty brutal. But it's 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 just an amazing film, you know. This yeah, obviously had the remake with Vince Vaughn, and mm. you know, it's, it's 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 it is what it is. And then you know, I'll, I'll say just for you fans out there, if you haven't seen the Bates Motel TV show, I would recommend it. That's actually a pretty solid. It's, uh, it's really good as well. Prequel slash retelling because at the end they do kind of re yeah. retell it. But uh, that that original, there's nothing that can touch it. Yep. So coming in at my number two, I'm gonna go with the first Nightmare on Elm Street uh, that Wes Craven made. Overall, I I've always really enjoyed that that movie. Um, um, I'd say it's probably the the first horror film I ever really watched. Um, my mom showed it to me when I was actually pretty young, surprisingly. But overall, it's a 
it was a fun time, and I really enjoyed it the first time I watched it. It made me fall in love with the with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. I'd probably say that's my favorite horror franchise of all time. I probably put it there because it's the first franchise I ever watched all the way through that was a horror franchise. But nothing beats that first Nightmare on Elm Street film. Seeing Freddy for the first time and understanding how he works, backstory to a degree is is always interesting to me. And uh, Heather Langenkamp and her role as Nancy is always a good time. And uh, uh, Johnny Depp's first performance in a movie is his first acting gig uh, is, is really cool is, is Nancy's boyfriend overall I just really enjoy the film and it's a, it's a great time yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with you here too uh, the first Nightmare on Elm Street is it's, it's more about the the concept that Wes Craven was able to come up with that you're being hunted in your dreams and you can't you can't escape it I mean unless you hurt yourself and wake yourself up uh, it's just really creepy, and you know the film, the makeup effects, the rape, the makeup they put on Robert England is is amazing, uh, and uh, Robert England's performance overall is good. And then of course, like you said, uh, Heather Langenkamp <clears throat> and Johnny Depp, you know, for a slasher movie protagonist, they're they're pretty solid. Uh, you know, and overall, the the movie is uh, is Wes Craven's best work, I will say to this day. That's a question. Well, he's done some other pretty good things. Okay. But, um, <laughs> it's, his, it's his most original work, I will say. I'll give you that, yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoy it, so that's why I got it here in number two. All right, all right, so to cap off my top slasher film list, I got to go with Halloween. Um, it's not always been my favorite, but I got to put it at number one because it is 100% probably one of the best made films on this list. I, I don't know what else I can say about it that I already said before and, and, and the ranking of the movies, but... Like I said before, I really enjoy that film, and it is a classic, so that's why it's my number one. Yeah, I'm going to go with Halloween, too. I mean, we've already said everything there is to say about it. It's just it's just a great movie. I would say not only is it the best slasher film, it is my favorite horror film. And I, I, just, I just love it, so... I think that's going to conclude our uh, discussion relating to Halloween. Uh, Dylan, you want to dive into some movie news? That yeah, we have absolutely. Let's go for it. Um, so this week we got a, quite a few new things. Uh, we got we got a Pet Cemetery trailer. We got a new Glass trailer. Uh, the first teaser of Aladdin. Um, we got the first trailer for Clint Eastwood's new movie, The Mule, coming out. We got we got some some news about James Gunn supposedly signing on to write, which has been confirmed now, um, and possibly direct Suicide Squad too. So let's go ahead and start off with the Pet Cemetery trailer. Um, what did you think about it? Uh, it looks pretty good, you know. I I believe it's from the same director of It, which I think so. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed It. Pet Cemetery is one of my favorite Stephen King novels. It is it's got potential to be really creepy. The first movie, you know, it's it's just kind of one of those Stephen King movies. They just rolled off the presses back in the eighties or whatever. It it's kind of middle of the road. It's just kind of a B horror movie. But this movie, you know, it's, it's got potential. It's got, uh, I think, Jason Clark as the uh, main protagonist. It's got, uh, I'm not sure how you say his name. John Lithgow. John, John Lithgow as the old man that's always warning them about <laughs> the woods. Don't go into the woods. And, you know, the the images of those kids wearing the animal mask, beating on the drum, going in the forest. That I mean, it looks like it could be pretty creepy. And, of course, that cat. I love, I love the cat that comes back from the dead. But, uh, you know what? I think it's got real potential. How about you? Um, as someone who has never read the book or actually never seen the original film, I, um, the, when I first saw the trailer, I, I, uh, I was really impressed. It looks like it, it really, it really could be, um, a good, a good film. Um, from what I, from what I've heard from Aaron and other people, that first one is kind of, you know, just 80s cheese. It's not the greatest, but this looks like it could be a, a great, uh, a great, little bit modernized version of it. Um, Jason Clark, uh, he usually does pretty good in his roles. I mean, he's had some bad ones, but he usually does a, a pretty good job. And uh, John Lithgow usually does a really good job in his roles. And I'm really excited to see what they can do with the film. I mean, if it, uh, if it, if you're correct, and it is from the director of the new it, then it definitely has a lot of potential. That that it film was was spectacular. Um, uh, but I'm 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 really uh really looking forward to to Pet Cemetery as someone who's never seen the original and I think it's got a it's got a lot of potential to be really good. Yeah. So uh, next on our list we have uh, the most recent Glass trailer. You know when I when I uh, when I watched the first Glass trailer I was automatically excited for the movie. Uh, I like Unbreakable. I really like Split. 
Um, and I like, obviously, I'm a Bruce Willis fan. James McAvoy, he's a really good actor. Samuel, Samuel, what do you guys say? <laughs> uh, you know, the, the biggest concern, obviously, is M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Shyamalan, whatever. He, uh, he's really up and down, you know? He's, he's made some greats, he's made some. He's made probably what I would say is the worst blockbuster film Maybe of all time, in The Last <laughs> Airbender is bad. But, so, but you know, I think he's been on a good roll recently. So, I, I think, and in the new trailer, it, you know, I, it looks really interesting. It looks like the first, I don't know this for sure, looks like the first act, maybe kind of like a, like one of those insane asylum t- torture movies where they're kind of torturing the, the, you know, our three main characters in this insane asylum, which I think is a really interesting aspect to bring into. Then, obviously... From the trailer, you can tell they break out. Mr. Glass and the Beast team up, and Bruce Willis has to stop them, uh, which I think can be a really interesting movie. Um, I, like I said, I all three of those actors I think can pull it off. Um, Sarah Paulson, <laughs> uh, Sarah Paulson. I, I watched her in um, the American Horror Story. I watched the first couple of seasons of that. She's in that. She's really good, and uh, so I'm really confident in her ability to to uh, bring a good performance to the table. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this movie. I think it may be the bit, one, of the, one of the best movies of 2019. I am also really excited for this movie. That first trailer was a good time, but this one, um, this one really adds, adds a little bit of extra excitement to it. Um, like you said, um, Bruce Willis, obviously, he's a, he's a, great, he's a great guy. Uh, he's, 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 got a, he's got a lot of potential to be really good in this film. Uh, it was great and unbreakable. Um, he wasn't really in Split until the very end when you find out that those two movies are connected, which was a really cool aspect of Split. I really enjoyed that. Um, also, uh, Samuel L. Samuel L. always always is a fun time for me, no matter what he's in. I always enjoy Samuel L. But uh, the real the real person I'm looking forward to in this movie again is uh, is James McAvoy. Um, seeing him in Split was really cool. Um, his performance in that movie is is really amazing. I mean, it's not Oscar worthy, but it's 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 great. Um, I can't imagine how hard it is to pull off 24 different personalities and personas in, in one film, um, and I don't know how he's going to do it again in this one, but uh, I'm excited to see where he goes with that. I don't know if you heard, but I read somewhere that they supposedly give a, a new superhero name to uh, to Bruce Willis's character. I didn't catch it. I don't know if you did, but... Um, mm, I did not see that. I'm, I'm really excited to see this movie. I think, I think, it'll, be, uh, I think it'll be really good. Um, my, my one concern, like you, is, is M. Night Shyamalan... Uh, Making the movie, but like you said, he's been on it. He's been on a roll for the past couple of films. Um, with, with the visit was pretty good, and um, and split was excellent. So hopefully, hopefully he's on a, he's on a good track, and uh, this will be, this will be a contender for a top film of twenty nineteen. So yeah. Um, next up, we got the new Aladdin trailer, the first teaser for Aladdin. So uh, what are your thoughts on that one? Uh, well, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the cartoon or anything. I haven't watched it in a very long time. Disney's being on a pretty good roll with these uh, adaptions to their uh, live action adaptions to their classic Jungle Book. I look at that one; it was really good. Wow, well, John Favreau did a great job with that movie. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. I think um, it has potential. Obviously, that original cartoon is 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 a classic. My one concern would be is watching the tr- the teaser. Some of the CGI, like the bird CGI flying. Flying Bird uh, did not look good. I don't know that maybe on purpose they might be trying to create that kind of like kind of like a Jungle Book, the kind of melding of it's it's kind of a live action movie, but it's also just kind of a CG animation movie. And it may not they might not have really been going for a super realistic vibe there, but I don't know. We'll see. Overall, I've never been a huge fan of of Aladdin. It's a good one. It's uh, one of Robin Williams' greatest roles, especially oh, yeah. for an animated movie um, as the genie. Um, Which, that's another thing. Like, who are they going to get to replace Robin, Robin Williams? Uh, Will Smith is playing the genie in this one. Oh. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually, oh. actually interested in seeing what he can bring to the table as the genie. I like Will Smith, so... My, my anticipation level just dropped. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think he could, I think he could actually be good as the genie. He's not going to be Robin Williams by any means, but he, he'll be a fun time. Other than that, the trailer the trailer's not bad. I mean, we don't get to see much. I mean, we see a bird flying around the the, uh, the Arabian desert for most of the trailer, and then um, actually, this trailer is pretty close to the original trailer. I just watched a side by side comparison of the of the original one, and uh, it's 
it's surprisingly close to the original trailer. It's really cool. I mean, but the the the, the one shot we do really get of anything is is Aladdin reaching for the for the genie lamp at the at the very end of the trailer, and uh, I'm interested to see what they can what 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 this movie will be. Um, interested to see where where they'll go with it and and how it'll be. So I think it'll be all right. Yeah. Um. And uh, next we got the mule trailer. I was actually not even aware that this movie was coming out until I saw the trailer here. Just a couple days ago. It's, yeah, not too long ago. Uh, I am a huge Clint Eastwood fan. I, I love Clint Eastwood. I have not watched all of his movies. Not Probably not even close, but I've watched a lot of his classics. I've watched a lot of his newer stuff. I think he's a great director. I think he's a great actor. And this movie looks, looks like it's got potential. It's got him in it. It's got Bradley Cooper. It's got... Um, Michael Pena. Michael Pena in it. Uh, Lawrence uh, Fishburne's in it, and it's got Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, so you know, it, it's got a it's got a stellar cast. It's got a lot of potential. Um, you know, obviously Clint Eastwood is directing and starring. So you know, I, I'm really excited about it. I don't know how big of a Clint Eastwood fan you are, but um, I, I wouldn't say I'm as big a Clint Eastwood fan as you are. I mean, I've seen uh, I've seen quite a few Clint Eastwood films. Um, maybe not quite as many as you've seen. I've seen I've seen a few of his classics, and I've seen um, a few of his his newer ones. Overall, I'd say he's a really, really, overall, a great director. Um, what he did with uh, with Gran Torino was amazing. Yeah. That was a that was a great that was a great film. Um, and then his direction in American Sniper was really good. Um, he did have a, a kind of a rough patch this past year with uh, fifteen seventeen to Paris. It wasn't the greatest, but um, not all that can be attributed to him. But overall, I think I think what he'll be able to bring to the table in this movie will be uh, will be really good. The story of it looks really interesting to me too. I mean, he's an old man, but he's also uh, working with the drug cartel a little bit. It looks like uh, transporting some cocaine back and forth across across national borders. Um, so it looks like it could be a, a, a really intriguing, really intriguing story that'll and uh, lends itself to a really great Clint Eastwood performance. So yeah, definitely. Um, so next up, we got uh, talks that James Gunn might be writing, but it's now confirmed that he is going to write but possibly direct Suicide Squad 2. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I think... I mean, that's exciting news. I think... I, I, I really like the first two Guardians of the Galaxy films. I think the first one is slightly better than the sequel, mostly just because it was just so original. You didn't really see it coming. I, I think he's a good writer. I think he is a good director. You know, and I... I think he deserves a second chance. How did you feel about Marvel firing him from Guardians um. 3? I mean, I will say I did read the tweets that he was fired over that came out. I guess around twenty twelve is when they when they came out. They're pretty rough. Yeah, they're, they're bad. There's they're, no question. They're, they're bad. They're bad. Um, but I mean, he he has publicly apologized for that. It was going on eight years ago, um, six seven years ago. I mean, it's it's been a while. He's already publicly apologized for it before the first Guardians film came out. Marvel and Disney both knew about it. Um, and they let him create two films, and they happened to resurface, and they fired him. Now, seven years later, um, I think it's a little over dramatic, but I mean, I guess you do what you got to do. I'm really excited though that uh, that DC is going to give him a chance to make a to make a movie. Um, like you said, he's a great writer. The the writing on those writing and directing on those first two um, Guardians movies is a fun time. Those are really standouts in the in the MCU for me. Um, just because they're so fresh and original with characters that not many people, I guess, know about. Yeah, this this DCEU definitely needs some injection um, of um, some fresh ideas. It needs some fresh ideas. Yeah, um, I'm really excited that he could that he's going to be writing writing Suicide Squad two. Um, from what I've heard, it, it's possible that it might not be a direct sequel to the first one. We might bring back a couple characters like uh, like Deadshot and Harley Quinn and. Probably Rick Flag, but other than that, um, we're, we, he's talking about maybe doing a little bit of a branching off, possibly with some newer characters. I'm interested to see what he could do, and I think he can probably produce a better film than the first Suicide Squad that David Ayer put out. Don't get me wrong, David Ayer can can direct some good movies, but that just was a that was a miss for me. But I'm excited to see what James Gunn can do with with Suicide Squad two, and I hope it I hope it turns out to be good. Yeah, and I wonder are they point are they bring, are they planning on bringing back. Jared Leto as the Joker. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything about that yet. Um, Jared Leto was not one of my not one of not one of the strong points of, of Suicide Squad for me. 
I don't really care for his his Joker a whole lot. Yeah. Um, Which I think because I think Jared Leto is a is a phenomenal actor. Oh, he's great. Yeah. And I think maybe with a better director and a better script, I think he could have. I think he could make a, a good Joker. One of my problems is is that they're making this Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix. It's supposed to be. Separate from the DC. Yeah, it's very separate. Yeah, which is cool. I, I'm excited to see that film. I think it may be confusing to you know more casual moviegoers who don't really keep up with what the heck is the what the heck is the DCEU? Uh, why is Walking Phoenix all of a sudden the Joker? Maybe kind of confusing why they're putting out that movie with Walking Phoenix and they're putting out you know other Joker movies with uh, with Jared Leto. But I think Jared Leto deserves a second chance. Uh, I don't think that his performance was. Bad. I think he was dedicated. He was definitely dedicated to that role. I, I mean, think he did some wild stuff. Yeah, but I think his as the way it was written. His performance in the movie for me is it's okay. It's a little over the top for me. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jared Leto's a great actor, um, and I think he definitely went all out for that for that role. Um, but I, I think you're right. I mean, I think with a better script and some and some better and some better direction and better writing that. His character could have been a little bit better, and it might have, it might have helped him to, to have a better script to work with in, in that first Suicide Squad movie. Um, so if they do bring it back for the second one, um, uh, with James Gunn writing and, and hopefully directing, I think that he's got a lot of potential to be to be a better character in this one. So yeah, I think that's about I think this about wraps up our uh, episode this week. Um, our next episode will be the review of Halloween. Uh, we'll hope to have that out. Sometime next weekend, hopefully. I forgot to mention in our introduction episode, if you want to comment, give suggestions, whatever it is, you can contact us at dnafilmwars at gmail.com, all lowercase. We hope to have this up on iTunes, on Stitcher. Uh, we will have we'll a... We'll definitely be available on SoundCloud. On and, SoundCloud, uh, that's all, yes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get it up on YouTube sometime soon yeah, as well. Yeah, we'll have an audio file on YouTube. Um... We're, we're, we're still getting going. We're still working on it. Uh, uh, we're still kind of learning this podcasting thing. Absolutely. Yeah, this is our first podcast. This is our first uh, attempting to podcast anything. So, as always, thank you for listening, and we will see you next week.